Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today we're joined by Oliver Wu from Australia, and we're going to be talking about are you a product fitter, a dispenser, or a prescriber of myopia management on the Myopia Podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, today, we're joined by Oliver Wu. Oliver, it is uh, great speaking with you. How are you on this beautiful day? Not too bad. How are you, Dave? I am I'm doing awesome, my man. Oliver and I know each other uh, from the myopia world. Oliver practices in Sydney. And uh, you, uh, you obviously have things a little bit different there than we have uh, here in the States, uh, but it's, uh, it's busy as it's uh, wrapping up the end of the year. What, uh, what's going on in your practice right now, my man? Uh, because uh, the, the COVID, we have kind of like a lockdown for about three months in Sydney, three months. <laughs> so a lot of activity, a lot of uh, service got restricted and we got, and we got lifted in about four four weeks ago, four or five weeks ago. So that's why people really, really need for the, uh, the eye care service provided by us. So we are so busy now. Yeah. So what, what did myopia management do for you over the last 20, 24 months with, with uh, COVID? How did it change things in your practice? Change a lot, change very significantly, um, especially we see uh, a lot of kids that become more myopic. I think it's not just Australia. I think it's like a global epidemic now. So the same thing in the U.S. I think a lot of OD in U.S. Um, see uh, more kids become more myopic or they might progress much faster than used to be 24 months ago. So mm -hmm. there are more demand for myopic management uh, advice and also options. And yeah, that's, that's what a lot of parents, they're more aware of the myopia issue now than before. And interesting part from my practice, uh, most of my patients are from referral. Mm. Yeah, that's the different. Um, yeah, because some practices, some of my friends might do uh, some, a lot of heavy marketing uh, in the social media and, and do different ways to, to um, to uh, we might use to recruit new patients, okay, or market it ourselves out. But my practice uh, mostly are from referral. So probably like Dave, Dave said is um, that's how people see the difference, how the practice um, is offering, and that's why the parents see the difference, and that's how the practice will start change. Or we may we might use the word transforming, and how we can grow. I so think, Oliver, you, you tell us a little bit about your practice. Like you're in private practice, you 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 own your own place, or you yeah, you're in it's private practice. practice. Many people don't know all of this about you. I mean, we've we've seen you. You lecture all over the place, but tell us a little <laughs> bit about your practice and your setting and what happens on a day to day. Oh my my practice is like a like a private practice. Uh, Used to be seeing kids after three o'clock because uh, Australia, the school kids finish at three o'clock. Like, um, that's why we see kids after three or myopic kids after three o'clock in my practice. Before three o'clock, mostly like uh, like pathology and some dry eyes and some specialty lenses like keratoconic one. Yeah, that's the practice that we, we try to uh, like separate like two sections, like morning sections, more for like adult, presbyopic, uh, glasses, Okay, try to maximize the, 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 the practice turnover as well. If we look at practice management and business things as well. So from your perspective, you're kind of like everybody else. You have your own practice. You're paying your yeah. cost of goods. You're paying your staff. You're paying everybody. Yeah. And yeah. myopia management has been a big part of your practice ever since the beginning, if I recall, correct? It's getting bigger, bigger. Business is growing uh, in terms of proportional wise is definitely uh growing growing yeah. yeah so here in the united states you know myopia management 
has been around for 20 years, but as our good friend Craig Norman said on the podcast, mm-hmm. myopia management is a 20 year overnight success. Yeah. It seems to be something that's kind of starting to catch on here in the United States. And we've seen that globally, but in Australia, mm-hmm. you guys have been doing it a little bit, a little more aggressively than we have for a long time. You've got more products and have had more products available yeah, for true. longer. What do you see is uh, is is kind of the trend and how are how are families and kids and parents starting to get more knowledgeable about myopia management? I th- I think the best things I see is more company uh, the industry which the industry more company and more proactively in um, uh, talk about myopia in the in the commercial world and maybe in the social media so the parents more aware the, the public awareness of myopia become more than before so it used to be like for us used to be uh, we have to talk about myopia, myopia myopia management in our practice isn't it <laughs> when the patients come in we talk about myopia when we find someone uh like young age they the the uh, the plus reserve really low okay maybe the, we talk about binocular divisions like if the fusion reserve is not normal and low young age then we are concerned about that myopia progressions so we think about how many patients we can see a day 30 40 if 40 of them how many are kids and how many de- how many of them are myopic okay maybe pre-mile we talk about pre-mile so how many things we can do actively uh, actively tackle myopia in the early stage if from our old days maybe talk about uh, two, three years ago in America, it's we become more passive in talking about myopia management, isn't it? So mm-hmm. we can see in the last 12, 18 months, especially in America, uh, the industry, some company more proactive talk about myopia and they have a little bit more advertising, social media, find some uh, uh, yeah. some, some KOL, some uh, um, some of our, our, our teenage time <laughs> television stars, okay? What, and some what, young people. When you say so that that's companies- become more awareness. When you say companies are doing more public awareness, what what has that looked like in Australia about how they're doing public awareness well? What does that look like? No, I think not as I mean, I, I, not as much as in US. Not that proactively, yeah. Because uh, America, you go, you find some uh, some uh, televisions, movie stars, and some young people, and they really do the social media part. I think Australia size probably we have more options to do. So like, like like David said before, we got more options. We got the uh, we more, we got more contact lenses in more early stage. Okay, we have uh, glasses as well, and we can use atropine. We can use ortho K. So basically, we have more whole package. Mm-hmm. We can we, we we can offer. We can manage myopia uh, in a more in a more fun way. <laughs> I would say yeah, more so, fun way. So with as many products as you have. Is myopia management mainstream? Is kind of every optometrist no. doing myopia management? And and Still why not, not if you've got so many products? Um, maybe because probably I would probably because people um, if I'm more if I used to work, people need a bit more uh, uh, used to work educations. Uh, if, I'm sorry if I use the word education this way. Is uh, if we want to provide myopia management. It, OD optometrists need to be well uh, equipped. Okay, you have to provide. Uh, I mean, industry wise, and uh, maybe the university, maybe some association, society need to provide much better education to equip the eye care professionals to provide the service, especially myopia management, uh, in a more professional way. Not just giving you a product. <laughs> so, myopia man- management is not a uh, like an instant noodle, that's what I would say. Uh, it takes time to manage. It's not one off. It's a long, the long journey that we, as an OD, as an e- ECP, uh, to provide that caring service to our myopic patient at least, let's say, ten to ten to twenty years. Mm-hmm. I think that there's something if people not prepared to commit this sort of service. I think it's a bit hard for them. It's pretty difficult for them. It's pretty difficult for them. Do you think that that's because, you know, like taking on a glaucoma patient is a lifetime journey, right? And and we kind of think about that with myopia as well as this going to be something. But does it have to be? 
right? I mean, if these products were available, readily available, costs were the same as glasses, you know, yeah. those sort of things, what's it going to take for myopia management to be mainstream? What's it going to take for, you know, every child to be able to be corrected with myopia management? And when you go, you know, to spec savers or you go to lens crackers or you go to my practice or yeah. your practice, like everybody's getting myopia management. What, yeah. What's holding us back from that? I think probably we have to think about three things, like like in the three category, it's are we a myopia management product fitter? Right. Okay. Are we myopia management dispenser? Mm -hmm. Are we myopia management prescriber? So when we sit down and think about am I the fitter? dispenser, a prescriber, uh, we probably will know uh, our positions, where we are, how we're going to do it, and what we're going to take us to next. Yeah, that's so how Oliver, Oliver what, do you, what do you mean by product fitter, dispenser, prescriber? Like if we look at, I mean, okay, if we look at the professionals, why? We are a uh, healthcare professional. Okay, so we are prescribing a treatment option or product to our patients. When we're prescribing, which means we have to make a really good diagnostic, understanding the problems and how we're going to treat, we have to monitor regularly. We might need to change our treatment plan regularly. That's how I prescribe. <laughs> so we need to review them when we see them afterward. That's how good we are. If you're the dispensing somehow, sometime it's like a pharmacist. We got the script, we dispense it, we explain to you what this uh, product is about, what need to be cared about. That's how we 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 get the medicine from Walmart, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, and the Walgreen, okay. So that's how we prescribe uh, how we dispensing a product, and the relationship might stop after that dispensing. So mm -hmm. a fitter maybe I got a product, I just fitted it to you. I know this well. That's it. You got it. I fit it to you. Then the relationship might stop there. Yeah. And that's would make how how a successful myopic man, a myopia management practice, and how to differentiate yourself to the rest is what kind of service um, that you're going to provide and how you're going to take care of your patients and then how to see your different to other other practice, other practitioners. So, but in the long term wise, I definitely love to see uh, the more kids, more myopic kids or myopic person benefit from all these three group of people. Like, yeah. for example, like when you look into some, um, for example, like in China, okay, China's got about millions of millions of people, okay, so millions, millions of millions of myopic kids but not m enough uh, ophthalmologists or qualified optometrists to provide uh, myopia management service mm -hmm. so to prescribe them because there are not enough uh, eye care practitioner ophthalmologists to provide the service. Even there are a lot of ophthalmologists, but they're not, not all of them are specialized or interested in myopia management. Okay. And that's why we have some, what we look at is, how some product, for example, some ophthalmic lenses product, and they are showing really good efficacy in managing myopia. So that's why the people in the front line, like front front line, maybe the opticians, they can fit that um, like ophthalmic lenses in a more easy, simple way, so mm -hmm. the kids can have the opportunity to get the myopia problem got managed okay, right. by by this way. And the next way, next thing is how we can communicate with those frontline people like opticians about how we're going to manage it properly with more professional eye care service and yeah. advice. I think I like, we, I like we look this. for like a, wait, like a, like a, we look for, we look, we, we look for is like a, like a teamwork together. Yeah. No, I like this breakdown of this. Uh, are you a product fitter, a dispenser or a prescriber, you know, because we don't think about ourselves from a uh, from a, a contact lens fitting perspective, saying that you're a toric contact lens fitter, right? You you you're not somebody who just does toric lenses. 
you realize that within the realm of contact lenses, you may need times for a multifocal sphere, a, a toric contact lens, a scleral lens and whatnot. And in the realm of myopia management, right, we don't manage the disease with a product. We manage the disease utilizing whatever product is needed for the patient at the time. We had Afe Vanderwerp on, who I know you and I and I love both both what what he says. And and he on the on the podcast he pointed out that really we need to be focusing on the disease, not a yeah. specific product. And when yeah. you hear that, are you a product fitter? Some people might say oh, we got XYZ's product from XYZ's company, so now we can help this patient, right? You need to have a toolbox, right? So that there's different things. You can't fix uh, this really complex condition with just one product. And so breaking it up, are you a product fitter that that's all you do? Are you just dispensing things or are you a prescriber who looks at the disease whole things. and looks at the whole thing and you yeah. know when is appropriate. That's when you become a specialist is when you can utilize yeah. more than one product to help manage a, a, a patient, right? Yeah, that's we that's why when we when we want to be uh, when we want to success in uh, MLP management or we when we want to build our practice in MLP management. I think one important key ingredient is the connections between us, like a connection between us and the patient and the family, how we can connect together. So like uh, David said is like, how are we going to provide like a whole full scope of service and management? We not just uh, look at what a product only, we look at the whole person as, as well. Yeah, I think some of the audience may have been fitted or uh, offering ortho K or blue myopia management for more than 10, 15 years, isn't mm-hmm. it? I think there are a lot of audience there. Yeah. Uh, maybe some, a lot of them have been really fresh, just a few years started. And I think when the day your patients come in with a big tummy, which <laughs> which is pregnant, <laughs> so you, you know you see how a person's life changed when they were young. <laughs> So yeah. I just have a young, beautiful lady coming yesterday and show me her nice five months old tummy. Uh-huh. She's pregnant. And I look at the age, she's 30. And she told me, Oliver, you fitted me off of K-lenses when I was 10 years of age, so 20 years. And I was so happy to see a patient like this. Yeah. So how the fruit from our hard work for Maupi management is not just how how, how the Maupi got managed, is how the lives got changed and transformed by us, by expertise, our, our commitment. I think commitment is something very important for us, uh, mm-hmm. as in uh, eye care practitioners and OD. And uh, it's a long-term thing. I've always right. shared before, David, is um, it's something that is a long-term thing that we have to commit to do it. That's how we can be a, 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 a excellent, exceptional, uh, elite uh, optometrist in our professions. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's something that we can make a big difference to our society. And we yeah. can be so proud of, I'm an optometrist, I'm an OD. <laughs> Yeah. When we tell people what 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 what's your, what do you do for a living? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that uh, I think you're spot on. And and uh, what are you excited about for the future? I always like to uh, kind of close with this: is within the realms of your practice, particularly around myopia management, what is exciting? Uh, we're recording this in, De- in in December, pretty much of 2021. But what are you excited about? for next year in myopia management? I think next year, what I'm excited, I think is 2022. I think probably because of the COVID, it's actually give us more opportunity to reach out to more people uh, talk about myopia, uh, both to our patients and also to our colleague about how we manage myopia because of the, uh, we can reach people in a more virtual world, like a Zoom meeting. I think my 2022 vision is probably I can help more people, more op- ECP, optometrist, OD, to understand more about myopia management through educations mm-hmm. and a lot of education, a lot of workshops. And that's, um, some of you might know I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, part of the AOC, the Asia Optometric Congress right. part. And next year, 
we will try to do uh, like four either physical or or hybrid workshop in Maupi management. It's like a more holistic uh, cover and everything. So that is something I want to. That's my 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 plan and my dream for 2022. I can we can I mean as a group we can train and educate and um, provide the best education knowledge or science to more practitioners to understand about this. I think yeah. 2022 is definitely more exciting year for all of us. We get more good food to our knowledge to manage my beer together. Yeah. No, I, I think I agree totally with you. I think in 2022, more people will be starting myopia management than any year ever in history. And I think that's really exciting is we're opening the door for more people worldwide to see the real benefit of myopia management. And there's incredible resources that are available and you're helping bring those resources available virtually. I love what you guys are doing. I see, uh, I see your posts on LinkedIn and social media about what the Asian Optometric Congress is doing. Yeah. I think it's just the coolest thing. And I'm, I'm really glad that we have you uh, in the myopia world, my man. So thank you. Thank you. Great. Talk to you later, boys, girls, ladies, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Oliver. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the uh, Myopia Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned next time for more episodes of the Myopia Podcast. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.